Hi, this is Casey Glass from Worship Synths, and this is what I look like when I get up in the morning. I'm here today because I promised you guys a review on the Space Station keyboard amp. This is uh, the V2 version of that amp. It's currently on V3. Interestingly, the technology was originally sold to Fender and Groove Tubes, and they marketed it under those names for a while. Uh, the inventor now has reclaimed uh, the product, and it's marketed under the name Centerpoint Stereo. Space Station. And you can find it at Sweetwater. I think it currently sells for $749. A quick point about listening to this uh, demo or review. I have a binaural set of microphones set up, so it will work best if you're wearing headphones or earbuds or something that goes in each ear. If you're just listening through a laptop or an iPad, it's not going to sound right and you won't get uh, the effect that this amp does. Uh, for starters, I think we'll go over uh, the controls and the build of the amp. The V3 amp that's on sale differs from mine and that the speakers in the current amp have all been switched out from Chinese kind of OEM speakers to eminence drivers. So all the reports are that it has a good bit better low end and overall sounds a little bit better. But the current version and my version are the same in that they deliver the effect the same way. And so we'll kind of talk about that. Um, and you'll get some idea of what makes this amp kind of unique in the keyboard amp space. Alright, so here we are with the amp, and actually it's made up mostly of an 8-inch driver with a coaxial high-frequency driver that's kind of mounted into the cone, and then an extra high-frequency, kind of super high-frequency tweeter. And then the weird bit about it is that underneath here in this bottom section we have a six inch driver that's firing sideways and it has an open back cabinet design of course so the face of the speaker here and then we flip around this way you can see the back of the driver here uh, so that you're going to get some frequency push out the other side of this driver and we'll talk about what that does here in a minute and then last on the back we have the controls so on my unit there aren't a lot. We have inputs. It'll give a high, high. Or I'm sorry, full range uh, mono output. Some from the left and right inputs that you can use for sub. Then we have an overall level control, and then the stereo width control. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. And then of course power. It takes a standard IEC plug, which in my world is always like the main thing. Like if you're going to build something, it's supposed to be pro equipment. Put an IEC plug on it. Uh, the cabinet itself is just MDF covered in um, kind of normal textured vinyl, uh, not anything remarkable there. The amp in here is pretty um, powerful, if I recall correctly, it's 200 watts and it sounds like it's 200 watts. It gets incredibly loud and it stays really clean all the way up through the gain stage. When we listen to it today, it's going to be on uh, about a quarter power. So that's it and it'll be super loud. If we were to go to the 12 o'clock position, uh, it would overload the mics, it would be super loud, my neighbors probably could hear it, and it stays clean that the whole time. So that's one of the really neat things about it. All right, so uh, the marketing pitch for the space station is that it creates a sense of stereo sound from just one amp location. Now there are certainly stereo keyboard amps in one cabinet, uh, but what they're doing there is usually they they're either just have two speakers that are together that the left get the left and right side. So really you're getting both your left and right signal but from a mono location and essentially it will sound like mono anything more than a foot or two away from the cabinet. Uh, what the space station is doing is reversing an age-old microphone technique called mid-side recording. And in that technique what you have is a cardioid mic facing forward and a figure eight mic facing sideways. And if you don't know, figure eight mic is getting phase and out of phase signals all the time from the front and back of the capsule. And in the, this recording technique, you take those signals, you flip the phase on um, one of the, uh, you kind of duplicate the front mic, flip the phase, add it to figure eight mic, and essentially what you get is mono compatible stereo at all times. So if you were to collapse the stereo channels into mono, it would sound fine. There'd be no phase issues. It would sound perfectly normal. Uh, and then when you do have stereo, it sounds stereo. Uh, the difference is the stereo width is usually not as great as if you just did like a left-right pair or something like that. 
At any rate, what we're going to do here, what the space station does, is it takes that same circuit in reverse. So you feed it stereo material, and it gives you a mono front channel. And this is the channel that has all the information that's common between the left and right sides. And then it gives you a difference channel. And this is a channel that is material that is not the same between the left and right sides. And that comes out this side-facing speaker at the bottom. Uh, the material that is on the right is going to be in phase for the speaker, and the material that's on the left is going to be out of phase. And so it will sound right because when the driver is going backwards for that out of phase material, it's actually forwards for that side. Now certainly the frequency feed is not quite the same because you're going to get the back side of the speaker, so there's not as much high end there. Uh, that's just kind of how it is. I can tell you that despite that, it works pretty well. You don't necessarily get left-right, but you do get a non-mono signal. So I would describe the space station as a non-mono amp. It, it takes stereo material and delivers a non-mono amplifier output. And it sounds very good. It sounds pretty realistic. And the uh, big pitch of the unit in the way that people use it seem to, to find it really works is that it stays non-mono for long distances everywhere in the room. So if you have to play through an amp, you can use something like this, and the audience will also hear a spatially diverse signal. They may not necessarily be able to pull left and right, but it will not sound mono, and it's harder to explain than that. Uh, I really can't explain it better than that. It's just not mono. It's not true stereo in that you cannot really get great directional left-right information, but it is definitely uh, way more spacious than mono. So in one cabinet, high output, very clean, you get essentially a spatial signal from your stereo samples. And this is a big deal. If you ever try to take, you know, one of these awesome pianos like in my Nord or in any other current workstation keyboard, uh, when you collapse it down to mono, if you're taking a mono feed out to an amp or a mono to the house, it sounds terrible. There's just a whole lot of phase cancellation. It's just terrible. And so to be able to deliver a, a non-mono signal is really pretty cool. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and play through it, and I'll kind of show you the differences and how that goes. Um, I'll start with it in mono, and then we'll kind of turn up the width control, and you'll be able to hear how the sound kind of blooms. And make sure that's all set up. Okie dokie. So we're going to start with just a, a regular piano patch. This is in mono, there's no, the width control is all the way down, so this is essentially what you would hear. suck is what I call it. It's just not awesome. It sounds like piano, but it's kind of blah, very AM radio -y and not very good. So let's go ahead and we'll turn up the width control a little bit. So you can hear that the sound kind of fills out more and it's uh, akin more to playing an actual instrument. Like when I play piano patches through it and it's kind of just even sitting on the floor, it feels much more like there's a piano in the room uh, compared to playing uh, a keyboard instrument. It's uh, really kind of weird how it works. And again, it's just shooting off the sound uh, really at me and then at the wall and then that's bouncing around the room and creating this kind of stereo effect. so that it's, it's about as wide as it will go. 
I find that for most rooms, the noon position for the width control is pretty good, but if you have a, a really dry room, you might need to crank it up a little bit more. And if you have a very reflective room, you may need to turn it down a little bit. Let's go ahead and listen to an organ through that. Let's see here. Oh wait, that's not it. Well, that's not it either. Do 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 do. So again, that's with no width control. And when we do this, I'll always start out with it in mono mode, and then we'll we'll turn it out. So you can see that, again, adding width up, it gives that Leslie some real motion. It really feels like space, and that is a good thing, in my opinion. All right, let's move on, and we'll do a couple of pads, and I think you'll have had the idea of it. All right, width down. It kind of fills out the space. It really does feel stereo, although again, there's not a whole lot of particular left-right directionality that you can get out of it. It's kind of mono and then the not mono part. Um, but I can tell you in practice, it, it really works. It really fills out the sound. And when I played with the live, it does work as advertised. You get a very full sound that does feel non-directional at a lot of different places through the room. Uh, I haven't used it in real large rooms, but there are users who have who report that that seems to hold up pretty well. The one problem I've had with it really is if you get really directional content, it can sometimes get a little phasey. So for example here, let's go ahead and we'll look at uh, Rhodes. And this Rhodes has auto pan on it. about it so that's the space station uh, if you were to ask me I would say that I really think that every keyboard player should have an amp it's great for smaller gigs you might always not always be able to go with in-ears uh, this is a really nice one to have you can put it on stage a little you know, a couple feet behind you turn the width up and you can hear yourself uh, loud and clear and the rest of the band can hear you about the same the audience can hear you it really sounds good uh, sometimes uh, this side speaker can be firing into a bandmate's head, especially tight stage, and you kind of got it up, and maybe the drummer's next to you or a guitarist. Uh, people have had a lot of success just turning it on its side so that the side speaker aims at the floor or the ceiling. You would think, well, then I'm not getting stereo anymore, but it seems to work. Uh, again, it's not 
really stereo, it's not mono. It takes a stereo signal and gives you something that's stereo-ish at the end. Anyway, again, this is Casey Glass for Worship Sense. Hope you avoid and <laughs> hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, leave any feedback in the comments, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.